On to Charles Darwin. Darwin wrote to his friend John Fordyce in 1879 that whilst he didn't call himself an atheist in the sense of denying God's existence, the older he got, the more he liked to call himself an agnostic, that is, not a Christian. And Darwin may also have been scared, just like Galileo, to publicly announce any doubts that he might have had about religion. The letter I just quoted was a private one, not a public writing. When The Origin of Species was published, it was met with considerable backlash from the religious who thought it was heretical, so much so, in fact, that Darwin felt compelled to change the text of its final chapter in response. Take a look. The original ending to The Origin of Species reads as follows. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one, and that, whilst this planet has gone cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been, and are being, evolved. One of the most beautiful passages in the English language, I hope you'll agree. But now look at the same text from the second edition of the book, published in 1860. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers having been originally breathed by the creator into a few forms or into one, and so on and so forth. Darwin added in this creator to his work to appease the religious fanatics who just couldn't accept that maybe the origin of species on planet Earth can be explained without reference to God. Now, how do we know that Darwin didn't simply have a change of heart and include this creator due to his own devotion? Well, because he removed it again from later editions of the book after the controversy had died down. Thankfully, the version you can buy today stays true to this original godless text.